St. Patrick's Day edition. I'm Bob Oche, and these are my kids, Prayer and Zayda. Today, we want to shout out a couple Bo Peeps, Zayden and Judah. Cool names. Thank you so much for doing our workouts. You rock. Even Shamrock. Keep pressing on and know that you're appreciated and loved. If you're a Bo Peep and want to be shouted out, make sure to comment and subscribe below. If you like this content, please also check out my personal channel, Bobo Chang, links below, where I have sketches, acting murals, and family vlogs like this one I made with my adorable family last year when the pandemic started. We were quarantined for St. Patrick's Day. More vlogs and exciting content are coming to that channel soon, so please head over there and subscribe now. Alright, this workout is full of laughs and lessons on your favorite Irish saints celebrated in March, hopefully. I know that's really specific, but I don't want to make the other saints green with envy. Hey! Also, I know I'm not Irish, but the rest of my family is. So they're like, Irian? Or... Orish? Oh! Spike that like if you like this video! Hit the thumbs up button down below! St. Patrick? I thought it was Street Patrick. No, no, no. The ST is short for Saint, and it's not my friend Mr. Patrick, though he's surely a saint in many ways, and he's definitely not from the streets. Saint Patrick was given sainthood by the Catholic Church for his work in spreading the good news of Christianity in Ireland, all the way back in the 400s. Whoa, I know. That's a long time ago. So, let's do a quick time rewind by circling our arms backwards. Don't try to play that backwards, I have no idea what that's going to say. As we're rewinding, did you know that St. Patrick was actually born as Maywin Suckhat to a British family? That's right, one of the most famous Irish figures started in Roman Britain. Yeah, I don't know if St. Maywin's Day has the same ring to it. Maybe. Well, some you may lose and some you may win. We guys, yep, oh, rip me, yep. Okay, now rotate your arms the other way as we travel forward in time now a little. Straight out, and straight. Little circles with your hands. So, how did Maywin find his way to Ireland? Well, he was kidnapped by Irish pirates when he was 16 years old. Are you serious? Shiver me timbers! But seriously, seriously, these people were not good and real scoundrels. Traveling to time is tired. Nice work! Okay, so as a slave sold by pirates, he worked for six years as a shepherd. So, let's lift some sheep as a shepherd might. Spread your legs a little, we'll squat down, scoop up the soft, cuddly sheep, and pick them up. Over. Okay, ready? Don't be sheepish! Let's go! <coughs> Maywin's years as a shepherd probably prepared him pretty well for his work in ministry as a pastor. What does pastor mean? Well, shepherd, actually. And it's good foreshadowing of the good shepherd Jesus he'd later be telling people about. Clearly, a lot of people shepherd him. I saw this really strong green female sheep once. I called her sheep <coughs> Hey, if you're a Bo Peep, this shepherding should be easy for you. You know, little Bo Peep. Great shepherding, folks. Now, here's Maven's big moment. He escapes. All right, we're going to run, but we're going to do it sneakily. So, on your tiptoes, crouch down a little. <laughs> Got it? Okay, so let's make like a cobra and leap, leap, leap. It's said that during his enslavement, Maywin found God and had a dream that God told him about a ship leaving back to Britain that he would get on. So he escaped and walked 200 miles in rough terrain and just barely managed to get on the ship. I'm sure it wasn't an easy journey back from there either by boat. Too bad he didn't have Amazon Prime. That two or one day shipping would have really come in handy. Ready? Go Stop. Very nice. We made it back to Britain. 
Nawin credited God for protecting and seeing that he made it back safely. And he thus became a priest and then took up the name Patch. Like I Patch? Get it? The name Patrick? Uh, yeah, but I like to call him Patch for short. So yes, he was actually Patricius or Patrick. Then he felt called to go back to Ireland and preach the gospel there. It said that one of the things Patrick used to help explain the Holy Trinity was Shamrock. That God is three persons, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet as one. Just like there are three clover leaves on one plant. And Shamrocks are also a mark of the beginning of spring. So, we're going to spring into a little Shamrock Trinity pose. That's kind of like a jumping jack. So with your feet together, jump and put your legs out, and your arms up, all at once. Got it? Let's ship rock and roll! Did you know that there actually are four leaf clovers? But the chances of finding one are one in 10,000. So you'd really need some luck finding one. By the way, why shouldn't you iron a shamrock? Don't want to press your luck. Not that I believe in luck. I believe everything happens for a reason and is not left up to chance. However, if my children, as beautiful as they are, and me looking the way I do, they're not only good looking, but you could say they're good looking. Have you heard the Leprechaun version of the Wizard of Oz song? So where Clover the Rainbow? There's a whole band of them that sings it, and other favorites. They're a clever band. Okay, way to represent that try you to nature. Thanks for letting me try this workout on you. Next, let's talk about snakes. One famous legend about Old Patch is that he drove out all the snakes in Ireland with a great sermon, no less. Well, most people don't think that's true or even possible since there probably weren't snakes on the island to begin with due to the climate. How's that for? Story. But wherever you live, if you run by a snake, it's probably good to avoid them. So we'll hop from one leg to the other, side to side, like this. Avoiding snakes. Okay, let's go. So he might not have driven literal snakes away, but some people interpret that he drove metaphorical and spiritual snakes away by telling them about forgiveness and the love of Christ. Either way, glad he did it. I'm sure anyone else would not be comfortable with snakes in their car as they drive away, even if they're spiritual. So with his luck, I wonder if when he played games with dice, he never rolled snake eyes. Great job everyone! Way to avoid being a snake sack! Hope they don't serve those at Shake Shack. Now, St. Patrick went on to minister to the Irish for decades, being spurred on by the thought of loving his very own captors and slave masters. How about that for loving your enemies? Not sure if they were actually reached, but his missionary work would go on to impact all of Ireland and much of Europe thereafter. An incredible and truly inspiring life that ended, they say, on March 17th, 461, which is why we celebrate it on that day. Now, Switching gears from history to folklore, another thing we usually associate with the Irish leprechauns and their rainbows. So we're gonna make a rainbow. Let's stand with our feet, shoulder width apart, keep your legs straight, put your hands down, and you're gonna walk them up into a downward dog like position, like this. And then you'll walk back. Got it? Now after those lucky charms. The original names for leprechauns is Loberkin, which means small-bodied fellow. Wait, so we're leprechauns? No, I'm not a fellow. Well, maybe, since according to Celtic beliefs, they thought of them as fairies who had magical powers they'd use for good or evil. Loberkins were known as cranky souls who mended the shoes for other fairies. So unfair. We might have this idea, like from cereals, that there were these jolly fellows, but here they were supposedly cranky 
and had way more facial hair, which is how I know I'm not a leprechaun. I mean, if kids were chasing me and trying to take my charms all the time, I'd be a little cranky. And fixing shoes all day? Doesn't sound that magical. Why didn't they just grant themselves a wish for a new job? I have to imagine magic stink is way worse than regular stink. <gasps> well, fantastic job, lads and lasses. Did you find the pot of gold at the end of your rainbow? Probably not, since have you ever found the end of a rainbow? That's the story of the leprechaun. They're tricky, and when a couple poor farmers found one, started wishing for everything, and the little red rain guy saw their greed and told them they could find his pot of gold, where? The end of the rainbow. Let that be a lesson. There are no easy pots of gold to stumble upon. Well, maybe digitally if you get into Bitcoin at the right time. Anyway, even wealthier than that are the spiritual riches St. Patrick experienced and we all can in receiving God's love offered to all. And I hope you profited today, physically and mentally, learning about old eye patch. If you did, don't forget to spike that like, and if you're a bull beat, hit that subscribe, ring the notification bell, and tell old Bobo. Comment below to let us know. Whoa, Wapa, maybe you're ST Bobo. Street Bobo! He still looks like a small-bodied fellow to me. That's true, but one without spiritual snakes. And remember, please check out my personal channel, Bobo Chain, links below subscribe there for more exciting content. Okay, until next time, eat your veggies, say your prayers, and be a little silly. Now come here, my little boat peep cheeks. Come here. Oh, Sheep were the type of car I would have sworn sound. Cheep, cheep.